Здравствуй, чат, товарищи, and welcome to a preview I'm going to do of King Arthur 2, the role-playing war game. And this is going to be a little bit different than some of the other previews that I have done before. Most of them have been 5 to 10 minute long videos with just sort of edited footage and some commentary by me about various aspects of the game. This is probably going to be an hour or so footage of just raw gameplay footage uh, shown to you guys of the game. And there's a couple reasons why I'm deciding to try this format instead of what I've done before. Uh, one of the reasons being is that I think you'll get a lot more out of it the more gameplay footage and it's showed uh, in a more sort of contextual basis rather than picking and choosing uh, gameplay aspects here and there. That also, and I don't have a lot of time on my hands with this semester starting up again, with school starting up again, so this is a little bit easier and quicker for me to do. So I think, hopefully, if my theory pans out, this is going to be a win-win for both sides. So without further ado, let's start this off. We're going to start a new campaign. All the, the, by the way, this is a preview build. The so the full game is coming out on January uh, the 10th, I believe. Today is January the 4th, so we're six days before launch. So this is a pre-release uh, version of the game, just so we're clear on that fact. So we're going to start the prologue. Just going to do it at a normal difficulty level, and I'll see you on the other side of the loading screen. Long before the glorious days of King Arthur, even before his father Uther Pendragon was born, Britannia saw the arrival of the legions. In the name of the Roman emperors they invaded the south, then set out to conquer the whole land. At the northernmost point of their conquest, where they met the savage Picts, they halted and founded the giant fort of Ibarakum. Ibarakum grew and became the capital of the northern provinces. But the Romans who came here never felt at ease. They feared Britannia, the wizards, and the gods in the woods. They knew that something ancient was slumbering beyond Ibar Arkham, up in the north. So the Roman Emperor Hadrian decided to build a wall to protect his land. Legends speak of Hadrian's wits and his mastery in the arcane, but some say he had help from a young wizard called Merlin. The wall was magnificent, and for a long time stone and magic kept out the tribes and everything else that lurked out in the cold. Then, times changed. When the fabled Ninth Legion disappeared beyond the wall, it was the turn of the tide. The Romans slowly withdrew from Britannia. But five noble families decided to stay in Ibaracum. They succumbed to decadence and fought over the remnants of their former glory until a young monarch in the south, a Briton called Arthur, changed everything. The flames of magic flared up again and a new age of wonders began. The noble families realized that it was the time they had been waiting for. While King Arthur was uniting the south, they were busy squabbling over their possible leader. The Sula family seemed to be the right choice to build a new Ibarakum. But not everyone agreed. The family's enemies were merely waiting for the right moment to deal with the Sulas and their heir, the Valiant Septimus. The right moment is now. Something terrible has happened in the south where King Arthur rules the land. Meanwhile, Ibarakum is under threat from the north. The wall cannot hold back the Picts much longer. When Septimus left his family, his bride, and his friends and rode off to battle, he was betrayed by his own kind. They abandoned him and his warriors in the heat of the battle, and he found himself alone, surrounded by savages. Still, he fought valiantly, until a fateful blow sent him sprawling to the ground. The Picts left him there, on the other side of the wall, in the firm belief that he was dead, and they were almost right. Septimus Sulla lay among the fallen for a very long time, and then, suddenly, he opened his eyes. So, 
there is your preview of the story thus far. When you open your eyes, you can't decide whether you're awake or in some kind of dream. You stand upon a soaring mountaintop, looking down on a thick layer of clouds beneath your feet. It is almost as if you were in the abode of the gods. Could it be that? You ponder. But your thoughts are interrupted by an ethereal yet powerful voice. Who are you, lost soul? And why have you crossed into the land of savages? So, one thing that's interesting about the game, and this is like the, the previous game, you kind of have a, a very sort of choose your own adventure element where you get to, there are adventure points within the game, and that allows you to choose from a variety of responses that can affect the outcome of that mission and perhaps the overall storyline in a variety of different ways. So, I'm going to choose, I'm Septimus Sula, Roman warlord, and I need to, and I need not explain myself to anyone. Your reply merely echoes in the celestial void at first, but then the apparition of an elderly figure manifests itself before you. He addresses you with a faint smile and an air of absolute authority. Ah! A genuine leader with pride and spirit. Very promising. But let's see what else we can learn about you. As he speaks, you realize that you know him. You have seen his face on marble statues a hundred times before. This is the great Emperor Hadrian himself, who died centuries ago. You begin to struggle with this impossible thought, but your pondering is cut short when you are beset by a series of visions. Still, images form and melt away, one after another. You soon realize that these are scenes from your own past, but they are all hazy and lack details. Finally, the visions stop, and you are left staring at one of your past battles. A true warlord indeed, who has no qualms with claiming the spoils of war. I killed the chieftain and conquered the tribe, but his amulet was useless. It was the sword of his son that proved valuable. Yes, indeed. Your skills have brought you many victories, and yet, here you are. Tell me, how is it that the barbarians defeated the mighty Septimus Sula? Have the Romans become so weak, or was it your strategy which was flawed? Um, I left my elite archers behind to guard my estate. They would have proved most useful. It seems the apparition intends to discuss the reasons for your defeat further, but the thought of the betrayal fills you with sudden rage. Enough, you say. I have answered your questions. Now you answer mine. Who are you, and what is this place? Indeed, you have the right to know. I was once known as Emperor Hadrian. And you are in my prison. As you know, I mastered the arcane arts in my life and created many arcane objects for the glory of Rome. My greatest creation was the wall, and yet it is not the reason I'm here. Unbeknownst to me, when I first bound magic to an object, an object of personal vanity, I also bound my eternal soul to it. Thus I became part of my golden wreath, unable to let it go, even after death. Centuries passed, and now only a fragment of the wreath remains, but 
That is enough to keep me here. So, I am dead? You have been mortally wounded, yes. But your heart still beats. Still, you would have died had you not stumbled upon my wreath. It is fortunate that you did for both of us. But your questions will have to wait. I must first show you something. Much has happened since you marched north, and there are many things that you must know. While you were fighting savages, an enemy struck at your home, an enemy you are not aware of. The Emperor falls silent and lets you watch another stream of images which depict a bloody assault on your home. You can only look on in horror as everything you hold dear is ruthlessly destroyed. Your family, your bride, even your lands, all gone. You have lost much, but you may yet save some of what you have. In this place, our powers combined can alter the very fabric of reality, and thus we can change what is about to happen. But your life is fading away, and we cannot risk you dying. We can only make one change, so you must choose. Save the trading post. Filthy villagers won't help me extract my vengeance. Very good. You have now faced the past and the present, but you have not yet faced the future, and you must see it to know what you must do. All your suffering, all the devastation you've seen, is just a prelude to something much worse. I thought it was inevitable until your arrival provided us with a chance. But it all hinges on you now. This is what will happen if you die. This is what will be if you don't walk the path that destiny has chosen for you. Our people have grown decadent and weak. Divided and leaderless, they cannot withstand what is to come. The members of your murdered family will have been the lucky ones. There is a reason you found me, Septimus, and together we shall face a monumental task. With the power of my wreath, you shall return from the dead and chisel the world around you until it has a future again. You must rebuild the legions and unite the squabbling families. You must restore the glory of Rome so it can stand firm against the tide of the coming darkness. While the rest of the world burns, a new Rome shall stand. But first, you must reclaim what you have lost. You shall return home, bury your dead, rebuild, and gather your strength. Your people and your soldiers await you. There is much to be done before the name Septimus Sula is known by all. So there we go, the story up to this point. I gotta say... On your way home, you meet second. an army of Roman soldiers headed towards the heart of the Sula estate. The leaders are retired Sula veterans, whom your father charged with taking some of the family treasures to safety when the rebellion started. After the Senate proved too slow to respond to the crisis, they took the initiative and used the funds to raise troops. They are overjoyed to see you alive and insist that you lead